caught some feels You keep your distance Try to make us real now let's dive into all the cool new stuff with Ozone 8. There's a lot to cover, so sit tight. The track we're using is the same one from the Neutron 2 video. This track is called Blank Offender by Soft Pyramids. And I'm gonna open up Ozone 8. It's got a brand new UI, so new look and feel too. Let's jump right into the big main feature, which is Master Assistant. And I've got a loop going here, and it's really important that if you're going to use Master Assistant, you have the part of the track looping uh, or the part of the track that's sending information to Ozone that is the loudest in the track because it's going to set uh, levels for a threshold and the maximizer. So you want to make sure that you are using it at the loudest part. Now, um, people are familiar with uh, Track Assistant in Neutron, the same sort of technology with a bit of a twist here in Ozone 8. When I call it up, we have three sort of targets. We have streaming, CD, and reference, meaning we can call up a reference and we can have uh, Ozone 8 uh, mirror an EQ curve and a loudness uh, level of the reference track to your track that you're going for. We'll cover the referencing bit in a little bit here, but what I want to do is just start off with streaming. And before I hit next here, just like in the Neutron uh, portion of this discussion, if we don't play music and we press next, we'll get a little icon that says hit the space bar. So let's do just that. So it is more forthcoming too, just like a Neutron's track assistant. It's gonna to listen to the audio, decide if it needs to bring up anything in the dynamics. It's gonna decide if it needs to um, mitigate any distortion that's going into the limiter and apply a dynamic EQ. It sort of tells you exactly what it's going to do and then it does it, which is really cool. So that's been about 20 seconds or so, and we're good to go. So this is, like the dialog box says, just a suggestion to help get you started. So this is a starting point, not a finishing point, not an ending point. So it's up to you now to get creative and use the modules um, to uh, come up with an awesome master. So the first thing I wanna show you here is a couple of the modules. It's decided to put a little bump here on the low end. It hasn't done much to the EQ because we're probably very tonally balanced in the mix itself. It hasn't turned the dynamics on. That's because it's looking for low end crest factor in the dynamics. So if you have a low end from about zero to 150 hertz that is uh, not very dynamic, it's not gonna be applying any sort of dynamics there. So the next thing we wanna do is look at the dynamic EQ. It's put some dynamic nodes down just to mitigate any sort of distortion before going into the maximizer. Finally, we have the maximizer here. Now, I mentioned referencing a minute ago. Not only can we reference from the master assistant, we can also reference from uh, the app itself. We have in-app referencing. So I've got a track here that I loaded up from Will Daly. It's called Sunken Ship. And we use machine learning to segment the reference track uh, just like we do in the um, main version of Ozone into uh, verses and choruses and bridges. So I'm gonna pick a part of the track that has a lot of energy. I think it's right here, I'll just double check. Press this little button over here so we can actually hear the reference. We can toggle back and forth. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that my reference is pretty loud. And I can actually see how loud it is on the metering when I go to the I.O. options here. And I can go to this replace input with reference. So that means that my input is going to be the loudness of the reference track. And my output is going to be my source track, this, the track that we started with, that um, uh, soft pyramids track. So if I play them both now, I can see right away on the input that this track uh, that I have as a reference is much louder than my other track. So I can either turn it down uh, turn the references uh, gain down from here. Or what I can do is match the loudness of my source track to the reference track really easily using the maximizer. And I should mention that we have a brand new um, IRC mode here, LL, low latency. It's obviously switched to uh, IRC 4, so we'll leave it there for now, but we have a super low latency uh, intelligent release control, uh, which came from Neutron. So, as I was saying earlier, we're noticing on the input level here of our reference track, it's around nine LUFS, that's pretty loud. I wanna bring my track up to that level. And a cool new feature to allow us to do that is the LUFS learn function right here. So by using threshold learn, I can dial in after looking at the input, say I wanna make it minus 10 dBs just to be safe. So when I'm ready, I'll just press learn and watch what happens to the threshold and ceiling of the maximizer. And also watch your levels at home. It's going to get a little bit louder. So 
So there we go. We can see that the input and the output are much closer together now. In fact, the reference track is a little bit louder, but I'm okay with that. I'd like mine to be a little bit quieter. And we have a nice ceiling of 1.2 dB. So if you want to throw this on a streaming service, and there's some sort of um, there's some loudness or compression algorithms or whatever will be safe by having that ceiling uh, where it is. So like in two seconds, we're able to bring up our source track to the reference level. The other thing I want to point out is also hidden here in the metering options. We have the show reference spectrum. And this is really important. If you're trying to match the EQ, let's say, of your uh, source track to the reference, you can actually see the waveform. You can see it in the background there. So the thinner, sort of more faint gray line is our Will Daily reference, and our line is the more pronounced white one. And you can see that in a few other modules. We see it in the dynamic EQ, and we see it in dynamics as well, which I'll open up here. And just a little tip, if we play with the spectrum options by right-clicking on the waveform, we can slow this down. There we go. So now I can see both EQ curves, and I can start calling up some bands here to kind of match my track to Will's track. So in addition to Master Assistant, to Threshold Learn, to IRC LL, we have some really cool functionality and performance enhancements to two of the most beloved modules in Ozone. We have some enhancements to the Imager and the Exciter. So let's start with the Imager. People love the Imager, and they've been asking uh, for band linking functionality. So before you would do something like this, you would raise band two, band three, band four. Now, if I double click to reset them to their initial positions, we can press this band link function and they all come up together. Or they all go down together. And the same thing is true of the exciter. So we can link the bands and we can sort of bring down all the mixes together or all the amounts together. And the new thing with Exciter is that kind of like Trash 2, you can dial in a different sort of excitation, saturation sound per band. So for example, I can go make my first one retro. I can make my second one analog tape. I can unlink the bands and dial in different sort of uh, amounts and mix settings for each one. So customizability and new tweaks to those two very beloved modules in Ozone 8. All right, so another great new marquee feature in Ozone 8 is the Spectral Shaper. This is a super, super transparent, incredibly powerful de module for not just a vocal or anything like that, for the entire stereo track. So I have a session here. This is a track called Catching Feels from Elijah Woods, No Relation, and Jamie Fine. And it's a little bit harsh in the high end. We're getting some stuff from the marimbas, the percussion, but especially the vocal. We're getting some S's, strongly stressed consonants that can be a little harsh, a bit like a blowtorch against your ear. So we have a new module to deal with that. It's called Spectral Shaper. I'll bring it up here. Little pro tip, make sure that it's before the maximizer so as not to incur any sort of peaking happening on the output. Um, good rule of thumb is just everything should come before the maximizer, which brings the loudness up. So. I am going to put my headphones on, loop a little section here, and walk through my moves, what I'm doing, what Spectral Shaper is doing to this uh, stereo track. We want to place this band over the area with harshness. And we can click this solo option here to make it a bit easier on us. When I get to a place where I feel I'm hearing a lot of sibilant energy, right around here, I'm going to narrow it down. So now you can hear those S's really coming through now that we place the band over that area. So now it's time to sort of deal with them. We can bring down the threshold. And I'll press listen. I'll stop soloing here. Press listen on the threshold. Just to hear what the threshold is picking up, already we're getting those S's coming in. So this is telling us this is what's going to trigger this module. And that's what I want. I want those S's taken care of. And bring it down for sort of heavier processing, though we don't want to go too far. We have light, medium, and heavy here. Just changes the intensity of the processing. We have tone, so we can actually shape and flatten those S sounds to something a little bit brighter or darker. If we go too high, they get kind of lispy. So we want to make sure that we don't go too high or too low, something just right in the sweet spot. We can also change the attack and release settings, which I'm going to leave at their default for now. Let's do a before and after, and this is one you're definitely going to want to put your headphones on to notice the difference, because it is subtle, but this is something that a lot of uh, masters run into. Um, overly bright 
masters, we can't go back to the mix, so we have to fix them at the master level. So let's do a before and after. I'm going to disengage the spectral shaper, leave all the other modules on, and do some before and afters here. So here's before. You blame. Hey. I caught some feels. Great testing. You keep your distance. Try to make us real. I know I'm wishing. Cause I'm stuck in the middle of something. And here's after. You blame. Hey. I caught some feels. You keep your distance. Try to make so those S's are still there. We still hear the sort of articulation of the consonant, but we're not getting like that blowtorch to the ear that we had before. That's the new Spectral Shaper in Ozone 8, an amazing tool for getting rid of harshness anywhere in your master. Track. 